Today, I'll be speaking about my reflections about how I felt after painting one miniature a day under 90 minutes for a week. Welcome back to the channel collectors. So this is the consolidation post for my first week of painted in 90 minutes. You guys can check out the results on my Facebook and Instagram. Links in the show notes below. Alright? So if you are ready, let us begin. Right, welcome back. So today I'll be speaking about what I've learned during the first week of painted in 90 minutes. So for a week, I've been painting one miniature a day for 90 minutes and these are the results. So my objectives of painting these six heroes from Zombicide would be that I want a unifying concept where I want them, when you put them all together, they have a coherent team which is they are a liberating a village which is being burned down and in chaos probably from zombies all right so the objective is i want them to really stand out on the table not just to have color not just to have three basic colors like what tabletop uh, tabletop standard is i really want them to stand out from the crowd and i want to spend the same amount of time on each miniature to make sure that um, whatever changes i make at least there's some control favorable to it all right so without further ado here are some of the lessons that i've learned so the first thing that i've learned is that lighting concept does save a lot of time so the example that i'll be using would be balric who is the wizard as you guys can see uh, he has two light sources one orange spell and one blue glow coming from his staff so why this saves a lot of time because a lot of similar colors are being used and there are a lot less time spent when changing colors however the downside to this is that i think you would need a very good understanding of light to make sure the effect looks convincing otherwise the entire illusion will fall apart so i recommend um, just putting the miniature under a light because i feel that helps a lot and probably you can also go check out our video on understanding values and how this helps illustrate this point the second lesson i've learned from this would be that different material appearances can be portrayed while using the same colors i will be showing you guys a short comparison between two color distributions however they are using the same color so as you can see from Nelly the Barbie, Nelly has black metal armor, yet she has this uh, black cloak. But I've used the same colors from both uh, metal and the uh, cloak, but I was able to portray it very differently through the distribution of values. So for satin material, I tried to put more mid-tone and a smaller highlight, uh, less strong also. And for the metal, uh, less mid-tone, more highlight and stronger highlights, alright? So another point of this would be texturing. For the metals, you could really do it really smooth. But for the satin cloth, if you want to apply some texturing to that, by all means. And these are ways to differentiate materials even though they have the same color. You can check out our texturing video right here. The third thing that I've learned is that non-metallic metal can be fast. There is always a apprehension for beginner painters to not want to try non-metallic metals for the lack of understanding. But I feel that I just give my re recommendation is just give it a try, go for the plunge, and it'll be really really fun. As you guys can see, without blending, non-metallic metal can also look pretty convincing. As you guys can see on the armor on Silas, I would think that Silas's non-metallic metal armor 
looks pretty convincing from a distance of maybe 30 cm which is normally how people play their games you don't play your games with your face glued to the table all right so for more information for non-metallic metals you can check out our video of how i painted the non-metallic metal gold the videos are right here um, of course in this tutorial i'll be talking about blending but if you don't blend and just place the colors accordingly to the shape i think it is equally as effective the challenge to non-metallic metal is to know the distribution of the values to make sure that it looks convincing and that the shapes uh, play a similar purpose also i've been experimenting two styles of wet palette usage the first style is that i will just adjust the colors on the fly and paint them accordingly and secondly i've pre-mixed six uh six different values and painted them on the materials so which method do i prefer honestly i would think that the pre-mixing one is very organized because it allows me to go back and forth between the values to make sure that i can clean up and blend very fast and very smoothly however the mixing on the fly is a lot faster and it also allows me to adjust the colors according to the situation uh, what i would recommend for everybody is to do a hybrid of both have six values done accordingly first and then over time adjust these colors accordingly to match the rest of the entire composition i feel that a hybrid method works the best because it allows you to go back to the previous stage whereas the mixing on the fly one sometimes you will mix the entire batch and you will lose the previous color which makes it very frustrating during the cleanup stage my last takeaway from this painting challenge would be that this is insanely addictive and rewarding i encourage everyone to give this a try with all my heart because i would say that every day i'm rewarded with one additional painted miniature which i can use for my own games and i think that this is insanely rewarding for a painter because in 90 minutes i am able to own something to a respectable level and when my friends and family play board games with me i think they can admire the work and it makes the experience a lot more immersive they certainly look a lot better than unpainted miniatures however of course everybody has their limitations but i feel that uh, 90 minutes it's a pretty reasonable amount of time for um, every per everybody you don't need to paint 90 minutes in one shot you can even split the 90 minutes over two days if you are a really busy person it just takes about what, 45 minutes a day and i believe that this can be done by everybody and i wish you guys luck and i hope that you guys take up the challenge as well so what do you think about my reflections for the first week? Let me know in the comments below. I really felt that this is a very good opportunity for me to experiment on many different materials and new techniques so that I get to become a better miniature painter and I encourage all you guys to go give this a try because I think it will make you a better miniature painter and all you need to spend is just 90 minutes a day. Alright, so you guys know the drill, hit the bell notification icon, like all the other stuff, comment below and all that stuff and also, if you can afford it, become a Patreon today. $2 Patreons get extended play footage to many of my videos and I'd like to thank my Patreons for allowing me to do this. Without my Patreons, there's no way that I could produce videos like this. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. See you!